guys, thanks for joining Live the Adventure. Today I want to cover with you three fire starting skills or materials or uh, methods. I'm going to cover three methods that you can use while in the field. Some of them are extremely basic, like matches. This is a very good method of starting a fire. We're going to cover each one of these. A lighter, this is a Zippo. And then we've got the Phariseum rod, or the ferro rod, or the fire steel, lots of different names for it. So we want to go over some of the simple methods as well as some of the complex methods. So I wanted to go over matches to begin with. So in regards to matches, it's an easy start. It's an easy fire. You don't need an ember. You just take a stick, strike it, you got fire. If you have a tinder bundle, it's fairly easy to get a fire going from that. But that's the pros. What are some of the cons? So the cons are wind can be a problem. You're limited to the, the probably the biggest con you have with matches is the amount of fires you can make with it. So with this, I can only make 32 fires. If you have stormproof matches, wind isn't a problem. Neither is rain or water. But these are normal matches, so that's a bigger problem. If they get wet, they're not going to work. If I were to have normal matches that can't strike anywhere, I'd also have to be carrying one of these, a rough surface that I could strike it on. So that's the pros and cons of matches. How do we use them? Piece of cake. Grab a match. There's a couple different techniques which I'm going to show you guys. So there's the technique where you hold it like this and you just strike the head right into it. And then there's also another technique where, where you hold it in a cup and you strike towards you. One technique you do not want to do is hold it at the back end and press and light. You are likely to break your match and then you're down one match or down one fire. There's a number of ways. You can also press your finger up against the match as you run it along the striker area. So that is how you light your fire with the match. Very simple, not very bushcrafty, but in a survival situation, it gets you an easy fire. The next method of fire I wanted to go over is one of the next simplest fires available. It is the lighter. This is a Zippo, and it carries its fuel within there. You pop this open, and you fuel it. Let's first go over the pros of this. It's an easy fire. Not only is it an not only is it an easy fire, it also is a very sustainable fire. There is wind right now, but it is still staying in. If I light the match, it is very likely it will blow out. I can also blow on this. And it still stays. So from an aspect of a sustainable fire that you can use to light your fire, this works very effectively. The bugs are starting to come out. You can also use it as a means of a light source if you needed to. Matches are a little bit less effective at that because they burn out pretty quickly and you have to be lighting lots of matches. What are the cons of this? The cons of this are obviously that it's limited. Like the matches, this is a very limited source of fire. It's limited to the amount of fuel that I put into here. Um, I find that during the winter, up in higher altitudes, it also works much less effective. Either it evaporates quicker or what it is, I'm not sure. Just having this lighter with you, the fuel will evaporate over time. So it is constantly evaporating. You can stick it into a, a Ziploc bag, might retain a little bit more, but it still is going to evaporate. Another problem that I found with Zippos is if they get wet, it is not going to work. One interesting uh, idea I had with a Zippo is if you did run out of fuel in it, it still has a fire steel on it. That's what actually initializes the, the burning wick. So technically, I think you might be able to use that fire steel to light a piece of char cloth or a bit of charred jute twine. So if you have charred materials, you technically could probably use this more than just the fuel source. That's an interesting fact that I thought about. I haven't actually tested it, but I bet it works. Maybe a little bit tricky, but it's long shot, but possible. That's the lighter. All right, so hopefully the, the sound's picking up good in this. I'm using a different microphone. 
So one of my favorites, one of the favorites among the bushcraft community is obviously the ferrocene rod or the fire steel. I think it's a favorite because it's a medium between too easy and too difficult. It's right in the center. So there's times when it can be really difficult to start a fire with the ferrocene rod if you don't prep things properly. Um, you're, you're, you're kindling and all that. But at the same time, it can be very easy. So what are the pros of a ferrocene rod? Obviously, lots of strikes. You can strike this sucker. I don't know how many times. You can strike this probably thousands and thousands of times. Make lots of fires with it. I found also that if you get it wet, it's not an issue. You dry it off, you use it. That's all there is to it. Ferrocene rods are very uh, useful. They are man-made. They're completely man-made. This is not in any ways a primitive bushcraft skill. This is a, as Tyler from TJX Survival calls it, a space age material. This is made by man. So do not believe that in any way this is a primitive fire starter. But like I said, it is a medium between extremely hard and really easy, like matches and let's say bow drill or hand drill. This is much easier. So that said, what are the cons of this? So the only con that I can think of this item here, it's got a lot of pros, very few cons. That may just be why so many people like to carry a fire steel. The only con I can think of, the only con I can think of is it requires a sharp tool to scrape and cause the sparks. So, for instance, a knife needs to have a sharp 90 degree angle. If it doesn't have that, you're going to have a hard time creating sparks. The better the angle, the bigger sparks you get. The bigger the sparks, the hotter, which means you can also start that fire easier. The newcomers, sometimes this is a little bit of a harder task to do with the fire steel to start that fire. But at the same time, it can also be extremely easy if you know what you're doing and you have your kindling. You can take a bird's nest and strike it a couple times and you get a big flame. So that's the fire steel, the ferrocean rod. So I know I said I wasn't going to cover technique, and I'm not really going to, but I did want to mention one thing. There's a lot of uh, opinion, as well as good advice, on how to use the, the fire steel. A lot of people say to pull the fire steel towards you, as such which I think is an excellent way. And you can see, having such a big blade this size with a sharp 90 degree angle, I will obviously want to pull the fire steel to me. Now, if I had a small blade, there's a lot of people that will also use the fire steel place it on something and strike downwards. That is another way. It doesn't mean you're wrong if you do it that way. There's a lot of people saying you should only do it one way or the other, but I think both of the ways have good reason to. Obviously with a small blade it works really effective. You don't have to worry about cutting yourself or hitting something with the small blade. Big blade on the other hand, if I'm going like this, who am I going to hit with this blade? This is a sharp blade. This can really hurt someone. At the same time, I might hurt myself. So, which way is the correct way to do it? Um, my personal opinion, I don't think it matters. What I think does matter is the size of the blade and how you're doing it. Because in some situations, you may want to press that fire steel up against your kindling and strike your knife to get the to get the sparks. In other instances, you may want to just pull that fire steel on the blade. Same way as flint and steel has two methods to do it, either hitting the striker with your rock to throw sparks down, and then also using your striker to throw sparks up. So does fire steel have two methods. That's how I look at it. So let's go and get a little bit of fire going with just a little bit of kindling.
There we go. We've got a fire going. That is why fire steel is so nice, because you can quickly get a fire going. So, we've covered matches, lighters, and the ferrocium rod. All very good sources to make fire. They have their pros and cons. Obviously, some bushcrafters may like to do it one way, others may do it another way. It depends on the level of where you're at and what kind of fun you want to have in the woods. Stay tuned for next week's episode as we cover the flint and steel. If you guys have not already, subscribe up here. You can watch one of my videos up here that I previously have made. And uh, remember, at the end of this month, we are doing a giveaway. So stay tuned. See you guys. This is Live the Adventure. Out.